I have watched quite the collection of horror movies over the years and I am no stranger to a rewatch when it comes to movies that I love or in some cases because I've completely forgotten them hence why I'm doing a second chance rewatch series here on my channel but there are movies for various reasons that I have watched that I I'm never going to rewatch again. And while the reason because I don't want to is perfectly valid, of course I'm going to tell you exactly why the movies on this list are never going to get rewatched ever again. If you're new here, I go by Hordes and I talk about all things horror here on my channel on Mondays and Fridays. And if you're feeling generous by the end of the video, maybe even like, comment, or even stick around and subscribe. It really does help me out and it's free. So how about we get to naming these movies? Eight horror movies I am never going to re-watch. Number one. House with a Hundred Eyes is a 2013 mockumentary horror comedy that forgot the comedy, starring Jim Roof, Sharon Malone and Larissa Lynch, directed by Jay Lee and Jim Roof. A seemingly average couple, Ed and Susan, are actually snuff filmmakers about to make the first ever triple feature, three victims, three kills in the same night. In order to provide their fans with everything that you'll get on a straight to DVD release, they have rigged their entire house with cameras and audio. Ed's plans slowly unravel and it is all captured live on tape. So, if you haven't guessed from my description, the entire movie is actually shot on either wall-mounted cameras or cameras on tripods. But that is not the reason why I hated this movie so much. The real reason is there is absolutely no audio levelling in the entire movie and it goes from being very, very quiet to ear-deafeningly loud in seconds. Like. I had to watch the entire thing with the remote in hand because that's how bad it was. If somebody had just levelled the audio, it would have been a much better viewing experience. And there is one scene in particular where I remember the audio being so loud that it actually hurt my ears. Is Now I have to describe this in YouTube friendly terms. Our main character Ed is sat in front of the TV and he is going so low to get his rocks off while watching a previously homemade video that him and his wife have directed starring previous people that they have been acquainted with. Nailed it! And it's just pure static sound and it is, it's so bad, it's so bad. Like, I don't want to spend the entire time turning the volume up or down just to enjoy the movie because I'm then not actively watching your movie. So it's one of those movies where I think if the audio had actually been leveled or they'd done something in it to so it, it peaks, it peaks really badly is the only way I can describe it. Like everybody's dialogue is really quiet and then all the sound effects are way too loud. So is it a bad movie? No, it's just, it's a, it's an average movie. It's not great, it's not awful. But the audio just makes this so unwatchable that I do not want to go back for a second time. Number two. Death Factory is a 2002 slasher movie starring Lisa J, Carla Zidemo and Jeff Ryan, directed by Brad Sykes. A worker in a biological factory contacts a virus and mutates into a creature that craves human blood. The facility is shut down for years until teens break in for a party and come face to face with the hungry beast. Death Factory is the lowest of the lowest, lowest budgets that you will ever come across in a horror movie. We're talking like the the monster girl in this, her claws look like they're made of tin foil and plywood and old couches does not an old chemical factory make. Like that's how low low budget we are talking in this. It's not filmed very well, it's not acted very well in the slightest. Um, I even last year tried to re-watch this movie and I got 10 minutes in, remembered how bad everything was and I turned it off. Like that's how bad Death Factory is. However, there is another reason that I cannot watch this movie ever again and that is there is a cameo in this movie by somebody, and I'm not gonna name names, somebody who was actually arrested and charged on 30 counts of SA against 21 victims, including a 15 year old in 2021. So 
If that's not a good enough reason to not watch this movie again, I don't know what is. I don't want to watch a movie with somebody who has been indicted on 30 counts of SA. Number three. The Collector is a 2009 home invasion horror starring John Stewart, Madeline Zimmer and Juan Fernandez, directed by Marcus Dunstan. In order to repay a debt, an ex-con breaks into his new employer's house to steal a valuable gem, unaware that another masked man has imprisoned the family and set up dangerous traps throughout the entire house. Not gonna lie, The Collector was probably the first movie that properly scared the shit out of me. And it's not the reason that it's actually on this list. The real reason is it is part of a subgenre that I just do not watch anymore. And that is home invasion movies. I will probably do another video entirely dedicated to why I don't watch home invasion horror down the line when I am ready to talk about it. But let's just say for now, the idea of somebody breaking into my house covering every single room from top to bottom in traps and then taking a family member as a trophy is just not for me and I'm never gonna watch it again nor anything similar so you can be rest assured that I'm not gonna be watching the strangers trilogy when that comes out either moving on to number four <laughs> Apostle is a 2018 horror mystery starring Dan Stevens, Michael Sheen and Lucy Boyton, directed by Gareth Evans. In the early 20th century, Thomas Richardson sets off on a fatal mission to save his kidnapped sister, rumoured to be trapped in a remote Welsh island run by a fanatic religious cult. I watched this movie about a year ago when I was visiting my girlfriend in the US and I was home alone in her house because she was at massage therapy school that day and to say that this movie gave me the worst anxiety would be an understatement like I followed this movie up with gunpowder milkshake just to make myself feel better because I love that movie but there was just something about this movie that triggered my anxiety and I genuinely can't tell you what it was besides just the entire movie just messed with me a bit too much. Um, and it takes a lot to push my buttons. It really does. I'm not somebody that gets very easily triggered by movies, but there was just something about this one that didn't sit with me. And there is a scene in this movie at one point when a guy gets the top of his head sort of taken off with a, um, it looks like a, cutie, like a cookie cutter and they scoop his brains out like a fresh pumpkin. Pumpkins, huh? And I really don't want to watch this movie again, so I'm not going to. So there's that one. I'm not watching this weird movie. You'd think, considering I love cult movies, love a cult movie, don't want to start one, don't want to be in one, but I love cult movies, and that's why I watched this movie to begin with. But oh boy, is this one not for me, and I really do not want to watch it in case I have that anxiety attack again. Moving on to number five. Strangeland is a 1998 horror thriller, minus the horror, starring Kevin Gage, Elizabeth Penner, and Dee Snyder, directed by John Pyplow. A pierced and tattooed sadist, Captain Howdy, trolls the internet for naive teens, luring them to his home to torture and defile them. When Captain Howdy kidnaps and tortures the daughter of police detective Mike Gage, he is caught. Deemed insane, he is sent to an asylum and is released soon after seemingly better. However, Gage knows it is only a matter of time before Howdy strikes again and he's ready to release his own form of retribution when the time comes. I've had to roll my sleeves up for this one because I was sold on this movie because it was pitched to me as a body horror about body modification. And while part of this movie deals with body modification, a massive part of it is just a dad who isn't good at being a dad, who is also a detective that isn't good at being a detective. His niece actually figures out who Captain Howdy is in the end, not the man working in cybercrime. Like, how bad must you be at your job when your niece who is about 16 back in 1998 can solve the crime before you do. Now, the main issue I have with Strangeland is it has a very skewed message about people who have tattoos and who have body modifications. And that is, those of us that have them must all be clinically insane 
and that we all need therapy and if we conform to society and become the human version of like generic white bread that we will all be fine and welcome back into society no no it's uh it's such a weird message like you've the first part of this movie i really think they should have hit harder it's talking about like meeting people in chat rooms and being aware that there are creepy weird people in chat rooms so where was this part in the movie why is why couldn't it just be like anybody can pretend to be anybody in an online chat room not if you're a weirdo that's got loads of tattoos and piercings and thinks that anything related to the subculture is really cool and interesting you're a weird person who is sick in the head and you need therapy and you should like go back to societal norms like no no and the fact that d snyder wanted a sequel to this movie no <laughs> please please no sit down sit down Mr. I will quickly say though, if you want a really good body horror movie about body modification, just watch American Mary from 2012. You are welcome. Possum is a 2018 psychological horror starring Sean Harris, Alan Armstrong and Andy Blythe, directed by Matthew Holness. Philip returns to his childhood home after failing to make his mark as a children's puppeteer. However, things change after he faces his stepfather and he's forced to confront long buried secrets from his tortured childhood. Possum is the definition of a it's just not for me kind of horror movie, but I can absolutely see why somebody else would really like this movie. Now, it is very artsy. There's a lot of symbolism in the movie as well. Um, but if you've watched the trailer, like I did, you might think that the possum puppet would have a bit more of a presence in it than it actually does. It feels like a movie of two halves for me. And I would say the first hour and 10 minutes is a like psychological drama. There's a lot of like making you think, you're not quite sure entirely what is going on, you're trying to piece everything together. And then the last 15 minutes, it becomes a full on horror thriller as it sprints towards the finish line. And that's fine. It just, it wasn't what I thought it was gonna be. And the end scene is a very difficult watch. If you've seen the end, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's just not for me. It's, it's it, like I said, it's the definition of a it's just not for me kind of movie. And I've made peace with that. Moving on to number seven and two movies that I actually think are garbage. The Farm is a supposed cannibal horror starring Nora Yesterman, Alec Gaylord and Vec Volok, directed by Hans St. Jernsward. While travelling through the countryside, Nora and boyfriend Alex stop off for the night at an off-road bed and breakfast. When they wake up, they find that they are trapped in cages like animals in a farm managed by masked people to supply meat and milk. I am aware that this is the third 2018 release here on this list, but I have to mention this one because I reviewed this one here on my channel. And by reviewed, I mean I absolutely tore it to pieces because <laughs> this movie, I hated so much of it, so much of it. But my biggest peeve is this movie was sold to me as a cannibal movie and I love a cannibal movie. I love a fucked up cannibal movie, but nobody gets eaten in this movie which is the one box that you need to tick to be a cannibal movie. If no one gets eaten, it's not a cannibal movie. It's a whatever the fuck this is movie. Now, I do think it is incredibly lazy that the two main characters are named after the actors because that feels clout chasey to me. Like, really, you couldn't have just... <sighs> there's so much that I hate about this movie and I feel like I'm gonna have to rein myself in while talking about this one otherwise we'll be here for a while but I understand that this movie has decided to go for the angle that the meat and dairy industry are bad we are all aware of that and this movie it feels like something and the best way I can describe this is I am vegan and I am the most unpreachy vegan that you will ever meet. This movie feels like if Peter 
made a horror movie and then the non-preachy vegans like myself have to spend the rest of eternity trying to explain to people that we aren't all this way like that's the farm and if you want to hear my full rant I will link the video somewhere because oh boy did I go off on one on that one but the next entry on my list and number eight is actually my most hated horror movie of all time. Are you ready kids? Feed is a 2005 crime horror starring Alex Lachlan, Patrick Thompson and Gabby Milgate, directed by Brett Leonard. Michael, an Australian cybercrime cop, discovers FeederX.com where the webmaster feeds his submissive charges during live broadcasts while charting their weight gains and vitals, taking bets on how long it will take each gainer to die. Determined to stop the killings, Philip travels to the site's proprietor in Ohio where he makes a terrifying discovery. Feed is my most hated horror movie of all time. Like nothing comes close to how much I hate this movie. And there is even footage here on my channel, I will link it again, of me ranting about how much I hated this movie after I just watched it. Now, Patrick, our main character, is the literal kink police. Like, that's his job. He is so bad. He thinks it is perfectly okay to SA his girlfriend. And unless you are, like, athletic, he body shames absolutely anybody. So whether you are thin or curvy or you carry a little bit of extra weight or a lot of extra weight, all of you are disgusting, according to him, unless you are, like athletic but this guy is slightly chunky himself so hypocrite much now he's so hateful and he assaults more than one person in this movie now to give you an idea of my personal views on things if it is consenting between two adults there is no problem regardless of what your kink is as long as you have consent there consent can also be revoked now this movie claims to be about non-consensual feederism, which is a lie. Now, main character Deirdre, who is there being fed to death, at no point says that she doesn't consent to being there and is very, very protective over Michael, who is the guy that is actively feeding her to death. She has no complaints about being there. And then the kink police flies in from Australia, like, excuse me, Ohio, I don't think that this guy has permission to be here, to basically put this down because he decides, oh no, I don't like this kink. I don't like any kink. I'd rather just beat up my girlfriend and get my, like, like get my jollies that way. No, it's awful. This movie, oh, I hate it. I hate it. I could rant on for longer about this movie than I could rant about The Farm. And I will never, never watch this movie. And I will try and <laughs> I will talk to anybody about why they shouldn't watch this movie. <laughs> like, I will talk people out of watching this movie if I can, because that's how much I hate it. Like, they're basically saying as well in this movie, that if you have any kind of kink, that you are mentally unstable and you need therapy. Like that is actually said in this movie. Like, okay, not everybody is vanilla. Like we understand this, but do I think that, you know, if you like nice underwear or shoes that you should be in an institution? <laughs> no. So my parting words for Feed from 2005 is just fuck off Patrick, you are shutting down healthy conversations between consenting adults and you don't deserve any more of my time. So there you have it, the eight horror movies that I am never going to re-watch. When I was coming up with the list for this video, there were actually five more movies that I considered putting on this list, so at some point you can expect that there will be a sequel with eight more movies that I am absolutely not going to re-watch, but 
If you enjoyed the video, maybe like, comment, or even stick around and subscribe. I post new videos here on Mondays and Fridays. You can also find me over on Instagram and Letterboxd at Hordes of Horror. And I will be back on Friday with another entry into my second chance rewatch series where I'll be watching Wrong Turn from 2003 again, which is a cannibal movie that I have absolutely no memory of watching, but I know I've watched it because Elijah Dishku's in it. So until then, bye. <laughs>